This is the Justin Dunn YouTube channel with another video of me working in the garage on my 4G63 engine out of my 97 Eclipse GST. In the previous video in this series, I assembled the bottom end, inspecting and installing the piston rods and crankshaft. Now it is time to put on the cylinder head, intake, and transmission, then install it into the car. Of course, I'm gonna be really concerned about a good gasket seal, so I wanna make sure that I get this block perfectly clean before I install the cylinder head gasket. About a thousand miles before the engine locked up in 2012, I replaced the cylinder head gasket and installed ARP head studs. I'm gonna be reusing those, starting out by lubricating the threads, and driving them all the way down into the block until they bottom out and then backing them off a degree. Then I'm gonna take a level and level them all out to each other. I'm gonna be running the cylinder head as is because in 2012, the machine shop milled the head and went over all of the valves. So now I'm just gonna check to see how well they hold water. And if they're not just completely leaking out, then I think they should be good for compression. Looks like that they're holding water perfectly fine on the intake side. Uh, just ignore that little bit of drip. On the exhaust side, they look pretty good. The last cylinder is leaking a little bit more than I'd like to see. However, I'm thinking that that should be enough for good compression. Once I get the engine fully assembled and in the car, before I start it, I'm gonna do a compression test and I'm curious what the reading would be for each cylinder. Put your predictions down in the comments below. Some of the head stud washers I had to put on with the cylinder head, then the head stud nuts I'm putting in by hand and then tightening them with a socket and extension. Torquing down the head stud nuts on an engine stand wasn't the easiest task. I had some ARP head stud lubricant that I lubricated the nuts with, and then I followed the factory tighten sequence and ARP steps to tighten. You also have to use a 12 point socket, so it kept slipping off and I had the hardest time. I like working alone most of the time, but it's times like this that you could really use an extra set of hands to hold the engine stand. I'm putting a lot of engine lube on these camshaft journals and I'll be reusing the old camshafts so I don't have to worry about any break-in. I wanna make sure that I put back all of these rocker arms in the exact same position that I found them in. I put them in an egg carton and mark what cylinder and what valve they came out of. I'm just setting these down on the lifter and the valve spring. The cam will eventually hold them in place. My second to worst fear is having a bunch of valve train noise when I first fire it up. So I wanna make sure that I put a lot of engine lubricant on these, making sure that all these rocker arms stay in place while I'm laying down the camshaft. Before I start tightening down the camshaft journals, I need to make sure that cylinder one is at top dead center. Between the screwdriver and the top dead center mark, I should be guaranteed to be at top dead center. Now I just have to line up the mark on the exhaust camshaft to be in the center. It always feels like this is the moment that I knock one of the rockers off and don't notice. Now I'm gonna install the camshaft bearing caps and I'm gonna tighten all them down by hand and then eventually go in like a sequence to make sure that the camshaft pushes down on the valve springs evenly. I'm gonna make sure I do the same thing with the intake camshaft and put the mark in the center. Thankfully, all of these bearing caps have an arrow and a number on them, so they're very easy to put back in the right order. In hopes of keeping as much oil in this engine as possible, I am using some black RTV on the front camshaft journal in between the camshaft seal and the front to make sure that no oil leaks out of that small little crevice and I definitely put some engine lubricant on this before putting it in. Now all of these camshaft covers need to be torqued down in a specific order to make sure that while the camshaft is going down, it is pressing down on all the springs properly. Some of the springs are at top dead center on the cam and then some of them are not, so it's a little easier and it's a little harder. So I just wanna make sure I do it very slow, making sure not to either break the camshaft or a spring or anything else. Then I'm going to make sure that they're all torqued down specification. And for your comedic value, I'm going to try to work on the rear main seal now. So I have to use the engine hoist and get it off of the engine stand. And that is always fun to try to get the engine weight on the hoist and then off of the engine stand. So, this was my best attempt. Of course, removing the rear main seal isn't just nuts and bolts. I tried prying it out from several different angles and I really tried not to ruin housing. 
Installing the new seal was even more difficult because it wasn't just pressing right in and it has to have a nice tight fit. So I used the hammer and I wanted to make sure not to damage it with the hammer so I used a piece of wood. Lining the rear main seal onto the block and getting the seal to sit flush on the crankshaft is equally as difficult. So I ended up getting it just enough by tapping it with my hand and then used a bolt to tighten it on the rest of the way and torqued it down to spec. The front engine bracket is just nuts and bolts so I just tightened it down at the half inch drive, no need to torque. Using the same half inch drive ratchet to tighten down the timing belt idler. Trying to get the water pump gasket to line up was a little bit difficult so I put some black RTV on the water pump to hold the gasket still. I let it tack up just a little bit and I started putting all of the bolts in by hand and I tightened it all down with a wrench. It's not very often that I get to see a 4G63 turbo engine this nice and clean so it's time to take a moment to just enjoy it before I close everything up. I'm putting on the valve cover next to close up the top of the motor. I already have some Allen head screws in here, but I do need to do a little bit more dressing up of the engine. Maybe even paint the valve cover once I get the engine running first. This time flipping over the engine didn't go horribly wrong, and I'm hoping that the oil pan gasket doesn't either. I am using the cork style, and I just want to make sure I orientate it correctly, and then uh, don't tighten it down too much to where it squishes out. I'm used to using a black RTV gasket, so if this doesn't go very well, I will eventually have the ability to remove the oil pan and put on a black RTV. But the oil pan does seem very flat, so I think that I'm gonna get a good seal. I just need to make sure that I do them a little bit at a time and then don't over tighten them. Try not to destroy the engine by flipping it over one more time, and now I gotta work on the hard part, doing the timing. The hydraulic tensioner has to be compressed while you tighten everything else down. So I'm gonna use a C-clamp to compress it into the closed position and I have a pin that I already used on another brand new hydraulic tensioner off of another 4G63 engine. It kinda has a feeling like I'm loading a grenade. Thankfully, Victor, a fellow DSM enthusiast, loaned me a few tools for the 4G63 timing. One to hold the gear still, and a spanner style wrench to tighten the tensioner pulley. I just can't seem to figure out how to get this belt to stay on. I think it's a good idea I should install the hydraulic tensioner first. Snug that down and go get the tool to hold the gears still. The problem is, is that it's a little marred up so it's a little hard to get in, I have to tap it. The last time I discovered that I have to get the crank just a little bit off so that when I put everything in, it tightens it up and puts it right perfectly at top dead center. I'm so glad I have this tool. It makes it so much easier locking down the tensioner without having to use a pry bar or something. Now that the belt has a lot of tension on it, I can pull the pin and hope it doesn't blow up. This timing cover has seen better days, but at least it will keep the debris out for now. And I'm not sure if I found all the bolts for it, but I also think I just lost another one. This is very satisfying to see this thing finally come together and look like a complete engine. Working on the harmonic balancer, very easy, only four bolts on here. However, I just have to make sure I line it up on the crankshaft properly. A little nervous about over torquing this bolt. On the last 4G63 engine I rebuilt, I broke the crankshaft sprocket pulley, misusing a pulley remover. My good camera is full. I really want to get this engine done. My goal was to delete this EGR valve. I don't have time to wait for a plate. I'm just going to install the intake manifold and worry about it later. Now I'm going to be installing the intake manifold. I got the gasket on there. Luckily this is on the engine stand because all of these bolts are really hard to get to. The engine is complete enough for me to drop it into the engine bay. Once I get it installed, I'll be able to finish all the other accessories. Moving right along onto the flywheel and clutch. I'm realizing that sandpaper doesn't really do much. I think the pressure plate has less than 5,000 miles on it and looks brand new. I'm gonna test fit everything together, clean these bolts, and put some blue Loctite on it. There was just no way of figuring out how to do this by myself. Very grateful that I had somebody holding the crank because these were hard to torque all the way down. You can really see the engine flopping all around. Now that I got the flywheel installed, I can work on the transmission. To get the engine and transmission made together, I have to put the dowel back in. And it's really difficult to get the input shaft and the clutch pressure plate lined up together. The hardest part here really ended up being trying to get the engine and the transmission at the right orientation so that they would line up on the dowel pin. I'm using a uh, dolly, but of course it wants to flip flop all over the place. 
I don't know where any of these bolts go. So how am I gonna put them in? Before I got this transmission, somebody else already welded on an ear, so I don't wanna break one again. I'm just gonna try to tighten it down a little bit at a time until it gets flush. Now I'm getting really excited because it's time to put the engine inside the car. It may not look like it, but I already cleaned this engine bay and previously tucked a lot of the things out of the way to make it look a little bit more seamless. I have to move everything out of the way so that way I can drop the engine in. Here's another look at the engine bay before I put everything back in. And you may see some of the modifications or just changes that I've made over the years. There's really just enough room for me to be able to get the engine hoist in here and swing the engine up over the core support and lower it down into the engine bay. This engine hoist crank tilts the engine and is a must have because I don't know how else I would have been able to get the transmission down under the transmission mount bracket. Just gotta keep lowering it slowly and tilting it. I can't figure out if I needed to go higher or lower to get that mount to line up. This transmission mount is so tight into the body and then on top of it, the studs are keeping me from being able to just slide it right in. I just need a quick success with this front engine mount. It's your home, don't you wanna go in your home? And through the process of movie magic, it is installed. Now I just gotta torque it all down and bring everything back together. At the last minute, Vincent came by to help me put the rest of it together. Even though the front engine mount is just as tight, I hope this goes a lot smoother. Now we just let the engine down to line the hole up perfectly. And it's at this moment that Justin realized that he... Was that the sound of it stripping out the bolt? Or the bolt? Well, it got tight and then it just didn't. So it's not tight, but it's in there. Oh, 
All right, so we accomplished so much in this video. So much got done today. I got the engine in and all of the mounts secured. So now all I have to do is everything else. Thank you for watching the Justin Dunn YouTube channel. Please like, subscribe, comment down below. Tell me what I did wrong. And hopefully that'll help me get it running. Have a great day. Thank you.